tell you a little story. It began with a plane heading from Washington to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The trip took place in 1974, during America's oil crisis. This was the beginning of the dollar's increasing global influence. At that time, the inflation was soaring, the stock market crashed, and the U.S. economy collapsed. The U.S. Treasury Secretary at the time, William Simon, was on an economic diplomatic mission, which was kept in confidence with the late U.S. President, Richard Nixon. There was just one goal, to find a strategy to convince the hostile kingdom to use its newly acquired petrodollar wealth to pay for America's mounting debt. The basic structure was simple. The U.S. would purchase oil from Saudi Arabia and give it military supplies and weapons. In exchange, the Saudis would fuel American spending by investing billions of their petrodollar earnings back into treasury bonds. But what is the petrodollar and how was Saudi oil dollarized? After World War II, 44 U.S. allies adopted the Bretton Woods system which meant that all currencies would adjust to the dollar. A 1945 agreement between the United States and Saudi Arabia led to the US dollar becoming the accepted currency for oil payments worldwide. With the emergence of the dollar-oil relationship, additional oil-exporting nations started to accept dollars as payments for their oil. The petrodollar greatly helped to elevate the US dollar's standing in the financial markets as the price of the most important commodity in the world, oil, was linked to the dollar. Earlier reports suggested that OPEC's Joint Ministerial Committee recommended cutting oil production by 2 million barrels per day. According to a U.S. Treasury report, the U.S. showed concern that OPEC's decision to reduce oil production will pose serious problems for the country and may even be interpreted as a hostile act. In response, Biden is contemplating drawing back on shipping military aid to the kingdom, that include advanced weaponry. The administration also made plans to work with the U.S. Congress to reduce OPEC's influence on global energy prices. Attempting to curve the prices of oil in the U.S. when all else failed, Washington has been actively using its strategic petroleum reserve. On the other hand, the kingdom is now interested in expanding into the BRICS nations. That means also trading in BRICS currency. Now eventually ending trade in petrodollars. Since Western sanctions against Moscow have encouraged commercial agreements that forego the use of the dollar, the de-dollarization process is now in full swing which we observe between states such as China and Russia that are considering other currencies instead of the dollar. The dollar's power is nonetheless losing its influence. The demand for dollars, according to Alexander Tomic, exposes countries to the U.S. financial industry and gives the U.S. political leverage. This serves as a clear message to other countries to decrease their reliance on the dollar. This is another way of saying that the world gives America unparalleled and outsized economic dominance. Despite the US only making up around 20% of the world's GDP, about 90% of all transactions involving foreign currencies are done in dollars, and 60% of all foreign exchange reserves are held in dollars. The US is imposing sanctions on countries, abusing their dependency on the US currency. This is due to the political influence and authority the dollar provides the U.S., meaning anyone who believes or acts in a matter that it regards to be wrong may be expelled from, for example, SWIFT. As a result, the U.S. establishes its control by force and brutality. In other words, the U.S. uses the petrodollar system to impose its foreign policies. In short, the biggest worry for the U.S. should be that the petrodollar system is under threat, as the government's power and capacity to prevent other countries, such as Saudi Arabia, from pricing oil in other currencies have declined.